excuse me. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Gibbs. It's your boy Gibbs. We're doing a replay analysis of Explodiac Killers. Actually, we're doing a 1v1, which is pretty awesome because I don't think we've done any 1v1s yet. Uh, but I just wanted to go through the Patreon stuff first. Like, last month, guys, was incredible. Um, you guys are insane. Thanks for all the support. But if you want to get your replay uh, analyzed, I have five slots open a month as of now. $20 tier to get a replay analyzed like this one. And uh, it, it helps me a ton. And you also get to uh, go into my friends list. You get to, like, I'll follow you back on Twitter so we can DM and all that stuff. And uh, you also get two other exclusive videos a month from the $5 tier. And then the $10 tier is the friend request and all that stuff. And a Q&A at the $10 tier if you want to ask me some questions. I do that at the end of the month. So on that, let's get into it. This is Explodiac Killer. We're going to go all the way back. This is a Prospect Elite 1v1. So this should be good to show some tips. All right, first thing. We're already starting off bad here. <laughs> so the flip comes in late. Or early, I should say. Let's go 50. So on this first one, well, one, you could flip to gain more boost on the deep one. Excuse me. Oh, man. I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, so you could flip... So you don't have to use as much boost to get to this ball. And then you could save some boost. He jumps super early here. There's really no point. Like, you're going the same speed. You can always jump a little later. And then he goes for the flip. But he flips like... I don't know. That's, it, hold on. Let's go back. This just seems off. We're going to go even slower. It actually looks weird. This camera angle I'm not a big fan of. But. Alright. So he jumps there. But then like... He flips it, like, the same time. That might be, like, a little glitch on the thing. But, so since you're flipping and he hit it with his spoiler. When you hit the ball away, then it, uh, the ball will actually make you pop up. Because you're already facing that direction. If the other guy also hits the ball at the same time. So, you should never fly up when you're hitting the ball. Like, you want to hit it with your a front bumper and flip into it that way. So, you have more power going into the ball. When they're right behind it. Like, you'll power through them a little bit more. And you won't get thrown up or launched up. So here, he actually changes up a bit and jumps right at the end. Seemed like he was... Like, the replay seems a little glitchy right now for me. But, um... It seemed like that one was okay. Right here, you should just attack this and try and score if you can. That was actually a good play by Amex. He, like, came back and made a solid play. Beautiful save here, though. Like, he hustled back. Now, the thing is, on this play first, though... When it's in the air like that, you, you could fly to that if you know how to fly. Like, if he's a little hesitant on flying, then that's understandable in ones. You don't want to risk it. That's fine. Because, like, right here, he waits for it to come in. See, that time, he, he actually does fly, which is pretty good. Like, you just want to flip a little bit later, put a little bit more oomph um, into that ball. But that was actually pretty good. That's what you should have done the first hit. And you probably would have scored as well. So don't be scared to do those, like, mini aerials to get that first touch. Like, always expect that the other guy is probably going to get a good touch, too. All right, so this is actually a really poor hit here. He waits this out. He's actually got decent momentum, but he, he like, kind of, like, fl uh, flubs up on the boost. He, like, boosts while going backwards for a second there, and then just jumps and weakly hits it. He could have backed up a little bit further, then boosted and, and put more power behind it. Like, you always want to put more mom uh, momentum behind your hits, if possible. Same with this. Like, he's cautious on these balls. Like, attack that ball hard. And then you have more speed, and, and you can get a better shot on it. And again, he has time here. Like, this is actually a place where you have a ton of time. Like, he hits it right there. He could circle back, probably, because he's up on the wall. And get a better angle on that, and have more speed going into it, and put that one in a lot easier. Now, Amex seems like he's, like, a nuisance. Like, he's going for the ball a lot. So, I can see why you kind of want to get to the ball a little quicker. This is a bad challenge right here. So... When you're, like, trying to drift turn back around, and he's coming at you hot, like, I'm either, like, attacking backwards, or just go to your net. Like, it's not worth trying to spin around and beat him to where he's already going, because generally it's just going to end in a bad 50-50, like it did there. So you're better off circling to your net, or just trying to play it backwards. Again, you're just a little too cautious here. It works out for you, luckily. But, um, alright, so right here, you bump Amex out. Because he whiffs. Like, I understand uh, breaking there to wait for the ball a bit, but... 
could be a little bit more fluid. Like, think of it as, like, a driving game. Try and make your car fluid when you can. Uh, like, you don't want to be jerking around in your car too much if you don't have to. Here we just get a nice, easy face-off goal. This is more on Amex. He just kind of tries to take it from a weird angle. And you just went head-on, which is perfectly fine. That's how I do most of my kickoffs. Just going head-on works really well. So, good face-off goal there. See, that's what you need to do a little bit better. Like, so right here, he actually flips a little bit later. It's still a little early, but, it, like, it works out. Like, it just kills the ball, and he he doesn't get launched as far. Um, one thing he has a problem with is his turn radius. Right here, like, you just got to understand your turn radius a little bit more. Get used to the octane. Maybe it's, like, you're switching cars a lot. Or maybe it's just, like, you are just not used to the turn radius. But once you get used to the turn radius, then you can turn on those and attack them better because you'll know how you're turning for the uh, shots. And then, let's see what happened here since I was talking. So, Amex is winning this ball. Like, this is good. Like, you're going towards your net. You might want to cheat a little bit more to the inside post to make sure that he's not going to try and dribble it into your inside post. So, drive towards that maybe instead. Uh, but besides that, it worked out fine because Amex kind of threw it up and you got a nice goal from it using the car. See, that's better. He flips a little bit later on that one too, so that's good. And it goes sideways. Now, you have no boost. You should not be up here like this. Um, so let's go back. So y you both miss and Amex misses the boost. And I like understand that you want to play the ball, but like you have no boost. And if you screw this up, it could be dangerous. Luckily for you, like, Amex was also driving a little weird, so it didn't matter. Right there is actually pretty good. Like, you dribble it and get... Actually, that was an excellent play. Let's go back. Like, this one's re re uh, really good. So, you dribble it back kind of towards the boost. You might want to hook it up the wall a little bit more to keep more ball control. But then you come back down, use that boost effectively, kill the guy, and then grab your own boost so you're back on full boost again. Now, here, you're trying to dribble, but you're trying to make, like, a move... On your own end of the field, while he's waiting back in his net, pretty much. There, you don't have to make a dribble move until he attacks you. So, don't use, like, like this flip is kind of pointless. So, right here, like, like you put it on your car, that's fine. Uh, just, just, like, leave it on your car for one extra bounce. And then if he attacks you, then you could jump and throw it somewhere if you need to. Don't use a dribble move if you're on your side of the field and it's not going to go in if they're not attacking you. You should only use a dribble move if you're trying to beat a car or you're taking a shot. And, you, like, you're not going to take a shot from your side of the field there. Uh, this is a good attempt. Like, I'm perfectly fine with you uh, missing aerials because if you're trying to practice them, it makes perfect sense to, like, when else are you going to try that, you know? So, I actually think this is a really good play because uh, this is a goal, like, uh, uh, if you make contact. So, like, I would say keep trying to do those. Yeah, like, you're going to like give up some goals but the best way to learn is to do it in a game because you can't learn that from aerial training that type of hit so what i would say is like uh, go for those weird aerials i would generally do a more like i'm more of a team player so i do it in twos or threes but hey man like like just go for them uh this is a good play like you jump just be before the other car and you wait a little bit which actually works because then you bait them in a little bit just helpful here, you just drive it in. Like, this is a smart play. He's um, over getting boost. You just got full boost, and you know he has none. Just drive that to the uh, outside post um, if you can. Now, he probably should have got back. He kind of flipped weirdly. But that's what you want to do when they're going for boost. If you can drive it to their net and to the furthest part from where they're coming from, then you might get some free goals that way. So he was going towards that outside post, which is very smart. That's what you definitely want to do. Uh, Amex almost on goals here. Here, yeah, like, you should be leaving, getting boost. Since he's got boost and you don't. Um, you, like, you grab mid-boost, and then you kind of turn off ball cam to grab another boost. You probably could have left ball cam on while you went back for that boost. Because you don't need that boost. So you're much better off doing that. Now, okay, let's go back to this hit. So here, you're much better off just going up the wall. He's not thinking that you're going to hit it up the wall. See, he's, he's not on the wall at all. So you don't have to hit the ball forward. Like, a lot of people always try and hit the ball forward and then get ducked on, uh, dunked on, like right here from Amex. You're much better off just hitting that perfectly straight on and rolling it up the wall and then have him miss. You might not score because, like, like the ball's in the air for a while, but it, um, it at least beats them and they lose on that 50-50 really hard. Um, 
So yeah, don't always throw the ball forward. Throw it to the sides when you have to, especially in ones. Because if you beat the one card, then you could probably just dribble it in uh, afterwards. So it's definitely a good idea to do that. All right, this hit, I would actually just sit on the ground. Right here, like if you just boost it on that, then you get it a lot higher. And you probably have a better hit. Like he almost had a chance at that. And if you stay on the ground, then he just has no chance at all. So I would uh, advise if the ball's slowly rolling towards you, especially like in an octane, just like sit on the ground and have it be a nice high pop. This is a good challenge here. Oh, let's go back though. This play is a little weird. So like, Amex is trying to uh, dribble up. I'm not. All right. So right here, when you're going back to net, not sure why you back up like that. Like you're better off driving into your net and doing a handbrake turn and spinning around. And if you do a handbrake turn, like you'll turn around a lot quicker. Like you kind of took a weird turn there and then it gave uh, Amex enough time to hit the ball again. And it was a confusing hit, but still. So if you do like a nice handbrake turn, then you probably have a better chance to uh, turn around quicker and get to the next ball. Uh, this is good. Just dribbling it to get some boost. Now, you know he has boost too. I would not I'll aerial that. There's no point of aeroing this at all. Look where Amex is. He's going back to his own net. You have all the time in the world to do whatever you want. And especially like if you're not that good at aerials, don't do them here. There's no point at all. Especially like in a close game here. This is a really, really poor play. And it could have uh, uh, been remedied by just seeing that he's nowhere near you and taking your time. Especially in ones you have all the time in the world most of the time. Because they're getting boost or whatever. Oh, uh, this is a good hit. Just like uh, pushing it up the field like along the wall. It's so smart. It's going for the bump. Oh, I like it. I like the bump. Nice surprise tactic there. It's good to change it up in ones. Like, he, you didn't do that at all that entire game. Oh, and then he forfeits? Holy shit, what a play. What a play. Let's watch it again. You got the forfeit from the blow up. With 40 seconds left in a 1v1. He should have definitely not forfeited. Guys, two goals in 1v1 is nothing. But this is a good play because you, you didn't do it all game. So he's not expecting you to come blow you up. So it's actually really smart. Now, of course, if you miss, then you have to circle back and get ready on defense. But it's not that threatening in ones. As long as you're not diving into their net, you're generally okay because you can hook it around. Uh, but I love that he forfeits with 40 seconds left. Never forfeit, guys, with 40 seconds left if you're down only two goals. Because you can score one goal at zero seconds. So as long as you score any other goal before that, then you're set. But, uh, yeah, so that was a pretty cool replay i thought because it was a 1v1 and it was a little bit of a lower skill which is nice um like actually like so i didn't point this out but here you could have jumped and tried to save this but i think it was just you thought it was high uh one thing that's hard to learn is like the goal dimensions and if a ball is going in or not and like I'll even pros dive for some balls that are not in but you got to try and figure out those goal dimensions as best you can by just playing a lot but, uh, yeah, so that's another replay analysis, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Look, this one wasn't as long. Um, probably because it was a 1v1 and there's a, there's a little bit less content I can give for it, maybe. Because there's less scenarios sometimes. But I thought it was a lot, uh, 1v1s has a lot of different uh, uh, scenarios. So I thought it was pretty helpful. Uh, look, let me know if you guys liked it. If you want me to bring anything else up in a 1v1 replay in the future and i will take it into consideration and again thanks to explodiac killer for the patreon tier and uh, i hope you enjoyed it and uh yeah see you guys next time for another replay analysis thanks guys bye